I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work and are backed by science. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. We use only top-of-the-line formulations dosed for maximum results and the best flavoring systems available. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hello, I'm Brian Dobson, owner of Metroplex Gym, the original home of hardcore training. This pandemic has nearly crippled the fitness industry we all so dearly love. With Metroflex Gyms now opening up all across the country, it's our turn to hit back. If your health was ever a priority, now's the time. Now's the time to stop feeding your fear and your anxieties and feed your desire to get back on the saddle. For desire is the starting point of all achievement. For those who feel uncertain for what the future will hold, I'm here to assure you Metroflex Gym will continue to provide a platform for bodybuilding and strength condition athletes all across the nation. This optimism extends to potential owners looking to venture into owning and operating a Metroflex gym. With interest rates at an all-time low, you can open up your own Metroflex gym for the price of a new car. Our Metroflex gyms are back in business. We're now waiting for you to do the same. Stay hardcore, y'all, and God bless. When you are asleep, they're just getting started. John Romano, Dave Palumbo, After All. Welcome back to another edition of After Hours, and I have my uh, my new 3D RX muscle mask on because I feel threatened by John Romano and his. I don't want him to infect me with any kind of uh, COVID-19 or anything like that. So I feel a little safer, John, with this mask on. I even have a. Uh, I have. I could put a species nutrition little plug on it if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, you, you've 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 crumbled. You've fallen to the you've fallen into the collective. Yeah, I I I, I find that uh, I I can't function. I have too much anxiety. I have to wear my mask all the time. You know, Tyler's over there too. You know, I don't want to be infected by him either. So. Right. Well, you you, know, you sound you sound just like um, Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know what bothers me more, that you sound like Charlie Brown's teacher or that I understand you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this off. I do like I, this mask. Uh, it was made with a 3D printer, by the way, which I still, I, I feel like my dad, because I'm, I'm having a lot, I have a lot of trouble conceptualizing how this, the 3D printer actually could formulate a piece of hard plastic, but um, it works, so. Very ingenious. 3D printers are amazing. They, they, they actually made an entire car. With a 3D printer. Did they really? Yeah. Yep. They have yep. a printer that big that can form. Yep. Oh my God. Can they do the. Yeah. Can it become. I mean, can they make the internal components of the car or is it just the outer shell? I, 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 didn't, I didn't really read the article. I just saw the, the headline The headline of it. It's, it's on my list. Right. But these days I have a lot of reading to do. Yeah. You can't even read anyway. <laughs> so you have to just much, watch videos all day. You can, you, so, even that, there's so much to know. Yeah. But um, yeah, they've actually built thing, you know, little machines that have internal moving parts wow. that are built on the 3D, 3D printer. They that just. Unbelievable. The way it. It's like an MRI. It's like it's a, that's how really how it works. It builds it in layers out of the material that it uses. Have you seen so the uh, show Westworld on HBO? I have. It, that, you haven't? I have. Oh, okay. So you, you see how they that's how they build supposedly the, the robots on there too with the 3D printers, right. yeah. Right. It's it's really cool to watch them work because the this this stuff emerges, you know, it's pretty cool. I, I've never seen it. You know, the, the the coolest thing I saw is I remember like 15 years ago, I had this um, porcelain like insert in my tooth. It was like called a Ceric filling. And it actually takes a piece of porcelain, which costs a fortune, by the way. And it and it it like cuts it with this diamond blade perfectly to fit this this contour because they first use a camera to contour your to see what the filling space needs to be and they exactly to the like milli or nanometer can make the exact perfect fit 
Uh, wow. and, 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 and that was cool, I thought. I watched it do it with squirting water and, and, and blades. And, <laughs> and now that I guess the 3D printer works on a similar principle to that. So yeah, it, it, it basic it basically hardens a, a, a matrix right. as it, it as it builds the, the pieces. It's pretty cool, but um, yeah, they're they're going to be able to they're going to be able to 3D print women soon, and then, yeah. and then Jimmy Pelletia <laughs> will finally have uh, the eight. perfect woman. Can they? <laughs> the, but, woman. the trick is, can they 3D print a jumbo like oh. cookie though? Yes. Well, wait. Before we get on to that, okay, I got and we and we will, we will, because yeah. we're gonna. I have been trying for three shows now to plug my freaking podcast with Rich Gaspari. Well, and plug I can't it, do yeah, it. you can do anything right you want. now. Okay, Fitness, Fame, and Fortune—that's the name of the show. Right, Rich Gaspari and me. It's on YouTube. I've it's been on, on the show. It was a great iTunes, show. Spotify. You were on. You were one of our most popular shows. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, since you've been on, we've gotten on Apple I you know, on, on Apple Play, iTunes. Right. Uh, we, we we had a, a Android, Spotify. We're everywhere. Okay. Um, I think thirty two. We're pla- showing it up on the screen so people can see. Thirty people can see. Thirty four countries. Yeah. So, it's we got great guests. We had Mark Bell, Ben Pakalski, uh, uh, Mike O'Hearn, Lou Ferrigno. Um, who else? Just uh, I can't think of them all. Speaking of Lou, but, Lou is, uh, speaking of Lou, Lou is upset. I think not at me or anything like that. But I had John Hansen on. We were talking about the history of Pumping Iron movie, and I guess Lou sent like uh, John a personal message, like saying that he was very inaccurate with what he with what he said. He said I guess John had said that that Mihalik was training with uh, Lou for the movie, and then that Lou said it wasn't true and. He didn't have his facts straight. And so I had reached out to Lou and I said, Lou, you know, John told me they had sent him this message. Would you want to come on the show? You know, you want to clarify? No. He goes, no, no, no. I was just a pro. And I, Lou, is, Lou and I get along fine. And he's like, yeah. you know, I was a personal thing. I wanted to just send to John because he got his facts wrong. So I don't know. I don't know what, you know. Well, it, it wasn't this, John. So <laughs> No, it wasn't you. C.T. C. C. Fletcher was a great interview. People really liked him. Yeah. And uh, so that was a good. But anyway, th- so, th- you know, that's the thing we got. Chris Bell coming on. We got other great guests lined up. So okay. you guys will really like it. People always say, like, oh, you know, Romano was, a, you know, one watch him on RX Muscle. So also, you know, come come support my site. Yeah, what you guys are talking about is how to, how to make a career out of being, you know, in our fitness industry, basically. I mean, that's what it's about. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. So fitness, fame, and fortune. We talk to people who have used fitness to create fame and have used that fame and monetized it. Right. And so, you know, it's, there's a lot of interesting stories. We had a great, uh, this, this guy from, uh, from, uh, New Zealand or Australia, John, uh, um, uh, what was his name? Rackage. He, he was he number one personal trainer online. It was a great show for people who were, you know, just, we had him on just at the beginning of this COVID thing. A lot of personal trainers were figuring out, you know, how to pivot and uh, uh, you know, continue their personal training online, and, it, and he he gave a lot of great information. I got a lot of mail on that one. So it's a you know, anybody who wants to know how to make money on fitness for, from the mouths of people who made money out of fitness, right. that's the show. So yeah, no, it's a good show. There, and you guys have a good good chemistry over there, so that's that's cool. Check Thanks. it out at their channel. We put it up on the screen before. Now. Yeah. Um, now to the cookies. Oh, to the cookies. So Mr. That G, I haven't gotten. That I yeah. have still not gotten. So Mr. G, Mr. G, it's funny. Mr. G sent me the jumbo like. I, well, I mean, I guess if you're going to name the cookie after me and I'm going to market it for you, you might as well send them to me first, I guess. So, you know, to try out. So I guess that that's why he sent them to me first. We got a whole bunch of flavors. Oatmeal raisin. We got peanut butter. We got macadamia nut. And we got uh, chocolate chip. I had the peanut butter. I haven't tried the oatmeal raisin yet. Actually, I had the. Uh, I've been eating them like crazy. To be honest with Wait, you. Make sure you taste it first before you say how yeah. good it is. Because you. Well, know the macadamia nut is terrific. The, the chocolate chip is terrific, and the peanut butter. I, I like. I like a cookie that's not too sweet. So if you like super sweet, then the the jumbo Palumbo, you know, mass cookies there are the way to go. But these are the jumbo lights. They're they're a smaller cookie, but they're not quite as overly sweet. This is the um. Cinnamon raisin. Tyler said these were the, these were really good. With the coffee. And he's right. Dip it in the coffee. You got to dip it in the coffee. Oh, you got to have the coffee with it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I got my coffee. Shot. It's so good. Italians dunk. We're we're <laughs> notorious dunk. for dunking. You had to dunk. You ever did a crust of the bread and a red wine? Mm. You do that. Yeah. Thing. 
<laughs> we dunk bread and olive oil. Yeah, we've dunk cooking yep, and, yep. and coffee. Biscotti in the in the in the coffee is <laughs> my favorite. Okay, so, so yeah, I was supposed to get the peanut butter cups, so I guess those are still under development. Now are these are these low in calorie? Well, the other one was like this freaking big, so he just downsized yeah. it and it's got the same stuff. In no, it. he changed he changed the formulation there. They're six. The great thing is these are the, the big cookies with 50 grams of protein. These are 16 grams. So they, I think for the size of them, they're actually getting more protein in here than you would get in the big one. Whereas the big one had more carbs in it. So right. there's a, the percentage of carbs is lower. And that's why they call jumbo lights. And it's all he uses all whole ingredients. All I, the truth to tell you the truth, John, I don't even put these in the refrigerator. They last a long time, and I don't know how they do because he doesn't put any preservatives in here. So, well, they're wrapped in, as long as they're wrapped in plastic. They're wrapped in stay. plastic, yeah. They'll they do, they, they hold well. But cook, to me, cookies are better the older they get because they, I, I like them I like dumb. them crunchy too, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I will tell you one thing, when they come, they're very soft. And he tells you you can put them in the microwave and all that stuff. So anyway, Mr. Potts Protein. He's, he's, I'm sure when he comes on later, he's going to talk about them nonstop. So I don't, I, let's, let's talk about something <laughs> else. <laughs> so the first NPC bodybuilding show took place this past weekend, NPC Oklahoma, my good friend uh, Eileen Calabrese, that's her show, and J actually JM flew out there for the show, I guess to show solidarity. It looks like the bodybuilding season started, so I mean, I, I guess we're going to have a season after all. Was there an audience? I don't know, I think they, they I, from what she told me, because I had talked to her like a week before the show, I think they were doing every other row, and they were split, you know, every other seat, so there wasn't, I, you know, at this point, I think it's it's almost like... If you're gonna open up everything, you, you know, let, it, just it, just it, open this it up. It's so infuriating. It's so infuriating. You can have you can have 150,000 people squished up against each other, rioting and pillaging and and looting and and destroying, and 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 that's and nobody gives a shit about you know the the close contact there. But you put on a bodybuilding show and you got to be you know every every other row. What, where is the sanity in that? You make a you made a good point. I watch I read all your Facebook stuff. At this point, we we basically quarantined for two months, or maybe I don't even know what we're up to at this point. If you're going to open up things, open it up, because like you pointed out in your post, people are going to get sick anyway. People get sick, they get the flu, they get the, you know, viruses, they get this and that. At this point, it, there's not a massive amount of people have it now. It, we kind of calmed the whole thing down. The hospitals are not overrun anymore. Open the businesses up. Whoever gets it, if you, if you have a high-risk situation, then you shouldn't go out. You know, you should, should, should quarantine yourself until you know for certain that it's not, you know, going to do anything, but we have to open the economy. So once you open the economy, it's really kind of stupid to walk around with masks on at this point. But I understand I wear one in the supermarket just because I got kids and play it safe. But I don't think at this point it's, it's even warranted anymore. You stay six feet away from each other. I'm, I'm stay home. Practice safe distancing yeah. unless you're rioting. Right. And they actually have that on the freaking news. I mean, it's like, a, like it, 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 this is how insane it is, you know? Social distance, you know, group, groups of, 50, of 10 or less, unless you're rioting, keep it to 100. Right. You know, they actually didn't, they actually have a, a caveat for rioting. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> insane. And the stupid fucking people follow it. That's <laughs> what's even more mind boggling is that you have morons that are adhering to this. Yeah. It's abs this is, this is the lowest of the lowest points in American history, as far as I'm concerned, this this is absolutely. Wait, they now they want to then they want to fire all the get rid of all the cops. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah, I know that's real Imagine smart. Right, in right. A city with no cops. Yeah, that's that's going to go over really good. Because <laughs> we're so good at policing ourselves now, right? <laughs> right. Well, did you see they get the BLM protesters are destroying a store. The the owner comes out with a chainsaw. I like, saw that. What chainsaw. He's going like this, and then he starts screaming, "Call me!" So they're over here destroying the store because they want all the cops to die. Death right. to the cops, they're chanting. And then they get confronted by a lunatic, and then they start saying, call 911. So, so how's that going to work now when you don't have any cops in the fucking city, you stupid fucks? What is wrong with these people? 
we'll just we'll just arm all the we'll, we'll arm everyone with chainsaws. That's all. <laughs> Come to my house. I got a lot of garden equipment I can use. You know, I got here. news to you. I, there's plenty of people out there that I know would rather just arm everyone. You know, they would rather just carry guns with them like the old Wild West, and people would just be shooting each other left yeah. and right. <laughs> You know I know what? plenty of lunatics that would like that. You know it. You know them too. That's coming. Yeah. That's coming. If they get their way and they defund the police, and can you imagine Minneapolis with no cops? Yeah. I know. Social workers. The only Social workers. look. So what I think they yeah. should do is get rid of the cops to pull you over for speeding. That's a waste of fucking manpower, as far as I'm concerned. Let people drive as fast as they want. Just just get a couple of cops on the ground and prevent some crime. That's all I care about. You know. <laughs> well, you know what? They, they, they're going to make their bed and they're going to have to sleep in it because the, the cops are quitting in droves. This is, there's yeah. a mass exodus of, of police officers right now. They're taking early retirement or they're quitting altogether. And, uh, you know, this is this is this is the, the fallout from this you're going to see. And it's going to be very detrimental. Dave, I have often wondered the solution. Are we going to have a civil war? I mean, really, that's where we're headed. I mean, this is I don't think this situation is is fixable. I don't think it is. There were never, no, one side is never going to meet with the other side in the middle. It's not going to happen. I don't, I don't, I don't believe, I don't think black and white people have a problem. I think that there's, there's instigators that are drumming this up between the media, people paying rioters behind the the scenes to incite these riots to keep us divided. Because there's a lot of people who are mad, black and white people who are mad about this. Absolutely. And I don't think that that these minority of people look. What happens is they here's what's happened. They they hire people to do these riots because they want to keep us divided. And then all the criminals come out and join the riot because they can go and, and rob things without being arrested, right? Because you know all the cops are are being told to stay away, right, by the by the governors. So it's like free reign. If I'm a criminal, I'm of course I'm going to go join the riot and go go loot everything, right? That's what I do. I'm a, I'm a thief, right. But the people who are inciting the riots are really not people who have any. Pr- Those are people that are getting a salary. You've you've seen some of these interviews of people that they're getting paid to do this. They, they don't even know who George Floyd is. Yeah, yeah. They they interviewed. I they, I forget one channel interviewed these kids. Do you, do you know what you're rioting for? You know? Do you know who's is the guy's name? You know who? Or do you know who George Floyd is? I don't know who he is. But they're throwing bricks through a fucking a window. Oh, if you got you paid, know. you know. Thirty dollars an hour to go right, you know, and you don't have a job, you can go do it too, probably. What what cracks me up is the people who don't believe that there's paid rioters, that everything right. that's not the way they see it is a conspiracy theory. That you know, they just they just believe what they see on on CNN and MSNBC is as as the truth, and that's you know they're, they're the biggest liars in the freaking world. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no there's no there's no fixing this. There's no fixing this. We got to divide America in half. The one side over there, the side over here, you know, lock the door. I don't believe it. They, you know, I think that people are gonna are, are are fed up with this, and I think that uh, I, I think that the people are gonna rise up and they're gonna they're gonna say we've had enough. Because you know what's happening? They're doing the government is, is doing too much. Yeah. You got to give it in spurts. You can't you can't try to change things too radically at one time. You know that when you do that, it doesn't work. People rise up and they and they just say we're not we're not gonna have it. And mm-hmm. Unless there's compliance, the government or whatever, or this, uh, this, this, you know, cabal, whatever you want to call, it, no one's, no one can make anyone do anything unless they have compliance. So they try to scare the crap out of you first, so that you comply. But if if you try, to, if they try to change too many things at once, which is what they try to do with this whole situation, people are like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going out. I don't care anymore. You know, and and then that's it doesn't work. So I think right. that's that's the problem. So what you're gonna, I think we're going to see is people are gonna, they're going to rein it back a little bit, and people are going to be like, all right. But although I hear now that they're they're tracking people's phones now, is that the new thing? They well, want to be able to quote, it, track it, the rioters, but so they're now they're 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 listening to people's phones. Is that the latest I heard? Oh, they've been listening. They've been listening to your phone for a long time. No, but I'm saying there's some kind of like I, there was an art, article that came out. Well, they actually said that that's like they're. I know in Minneapolis well, at least they're listening to. Well, they're, there was supposed to be one that was supposed to track the virus or some see if you got vaccinated or some shit. They were trying to embed in the oh, new chip. updates. They want to on chip your, you on your yeah, on your phones. I don't microchip. know about the rioting ones, but um, you know, th- this this is you got to you got to couch some of this to the fact that 
you know, this was a powder, America was a powder keg ready to explode. I think I said this on the last show. You've had everybody locked down. You've had people have lost their jobs, businesses yeah. have closed, people are out of money. The, the domestic violence is up, suicide is up, other crime is up. Everybody's angry. Everybody wants to leave. These stupid governors keep making these ridiculous rules and light. So you got what other people, some people are out on the beach having a great time at a barbecue yeah. and the other people got to stay home. How is that? <laughs> and all of that is festering, festering, right. festering. Then a white cop put, you know, chokes a, a black man to death on, on camera and boom, that's all you needed. You know, you and saw that video I sent you. Now here we are, America's smoldering. Yeah, you said, saw that video I sent you, and I don't know if it's true or not. It was a video that suggested that the cop and oh, yeah. George Floyd weren't actors and that it really didn't happen and they were showing evidence to show that the cop was at different um, riots over the last, you know, you know, decade or so or the last couple of years. And that, you know, they, they were trying to show that the badges that they had on were sprayed on. They weren't even real badges. And... I don't know if it's real or not, you know, but it, it you know, it, it definitely seems like it's possible. It's plausible. <laughs> I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't doubt is, anything, you know. Every every event has a conspiracy theory, yeah, from yeah. Sandy Hook to the man landed yeah. on the moon to to, to the nine nine eleven. There's a, there's a conspiracy theory for everything. So, yeah. um, have there been? photos that were supposedly of one place that were actually another the media is so corrupt that 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 a lot enough of these things get squeaked through so that you can lend credence to such a why did the media theory. sell out john is it was it a money thing i mean the media never was beholden to money i mean what why did the media all of a sudden sell out in our in this country I think when it got purchased by select, you know, the, the six people own all the media. Right. So it's so it's and they're very rich, very powerful people who want to be more rich and more powerful. And they align with the globalists who want the new world order, which is one government to, right. to, 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 to govern the entire world and, you know, pool all the money and make everything fair for everybody. And. They they stand to become Bill Gates. If Bill Gates could have gotten this 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 vaccine scam of his past, that everybody in the entire world had to be vaccinated twice with his vaccine, he would have been the first trillionaire. That means something to them. So yeah. the media is complicit because of two things. One is that that the, the cabal that owns them are controlled by the government. So Nancy Pelosi tells Rupert Murdoch what they what they want the message they want to put out there. Right. And you've seen the collages, you know, the of of the talking points, you know, catastrophic development, catastrophic, and they all talk say catastrophic right. development right. at right. the same time because catastrophic development is the talking point, you know, of of the day. So. The, the media gets to brainwash a, a segment of the population that are de democratic voters. And mm -hmm. this is a very powerful and important block of people for them that ha they have to keep satiated with enough bullshit to keep them voting Democrat, right. to even control. So they, they don't want to lose those votes. So that they, they pander to what they think is mathematically the best chance of garnering the most voter participation for that particular block that they're trying to kowtow to. Right. And that's that's what it comes down to. Well, and it's and, and it's all it's all about maintaining power. So the media is the mouthpiece of the Democratic Party, the mainstream media, MSNBC, CNN. That's who you're, you know, CBS, the New York, the, the New York Times. The, the, this is and what happens is this is these medias are, are, are the only window these people have into what's going on. They have no other alternative source of information. Right. They only know what they're being fed by these organizations, and they act as they're told. Well, so you, that, I mean, what, people believe whatever they're told anyway, and they're like, they're sheep. You, we know that already. Well, I mean, that's, but, but, but if you have no opposing viewpoint, they have nothing to compare right, it to. Right. So, you know, it's that's amazing, what they you know, get. That, that there is no real opposing viewpoint that has garnished like a a powerful position because I guess these the people who are very wealthy seem to have the ability to suppress that. And well, there's the Associated Press and NPR though. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we're joined by Greg <laughs> Valentino. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? How you doing? You look good. Are we, you look, are you are we on the air? We're on the air. John and I have oh, been uh, recording. Yeah. We, John, are you there still? 
Because I tried to get on. I could never get on. I think you knocked. Uh, usually I, I, think, just I, I think you got on and knocked John off. How does that? I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. That, you know that what it happens. is? I don't know. It's hard to join. I, we got uh, Jimmy said he can't get, he can't get on. All right. Let's, let's see if we can get the other whack Packers on. We got to get Jimmy on. And uh, we got Greg on. I guess we got to get John back. And I guess probably we should try uh, Mr. G, too. I don't know if he's around, though. Oh, somebody's coming on. John. Unbelievable. Right. Right. Unavailable. Okay. So what are we talking about so far? We're, John was talking about the New World Order and, uh, and overthrow, <laughs> overthrowing the government, basically. Typical conversation that we, John and I have here. It's I was showing it's him, sick. I'll wait till Mr. G comes on, but I was showing him my new jumbo-like cookies I got. You're going to like these, Greg. Except, I ate them. I ate the whole box. He gave them to me already. I ate the whole <laughs> no, the jumbo lights you got? I got the jumbo lights and the cannoli cookies. R there he is. Oh, there he is, Mr. G. You say great hey, cannoli hey, cookies? Hey, what are you doing, G? That th unbelievable. Those cannoli cookies are banging. How come I didn't get any cannoli cookies? Uh, because I we have to make the uh, that cream that's inside there. It's made from a, a fresh regatta, and that's and that takes like four days to actually prep. Even the doughs. See, most people. You don't didn't answer my like, question. How come I didn't get any? I'll, I'll send them because we. <laughs> I just, I'll send them to you. <laughs> I got the old ones. No, they were great. Greg, you must be a higher priority than me. Maybe because you have you had cancer, so Greg, uh, George should have put you on the priority list. No, you know what it is. I had a high. I had a high more people. I just don't have. I don't. I, we got so much so swamped, yeah. and I only had a. I warned you. To make I warned you. I said if I was going to start promoting your cookies, the Jumbo Paloma cookies, I said people are going to buy them, and you're going to have to be able to produce these things. So you got to. Well, we're we're fulfilling all the orders, but I want to I, I want to move forward and be able to, to go beyond that. So we we, we bought we bought uh, four new ovens, you know, and and we're in the process of sweet. We got we got a big warehouse where we have everything where we have all all the seasoning stuff stored, and we. We bake, so we cook in a, another commercial kitchen. We're going to switch our warehouse over to a combination of both. So this way we can we can cook there and ship it right out. You know what? So, Wait a minute. Dave, you know why you didn't get your cookies? I'm going to be honest with you. Because of your white privilege, honestly. Because I'm what? Because you're white privilege. Oh. <laughs> I actually got the cookies. The cookies are delicious. I didn't get the, and my kids love them too. I didn't get the cannolis. Maybe because I'm not Italian enough. I'm only half Italian. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, hey, I hired a new pastry chef from Italy. He'll come on next week. I'm going to have him come on. Mr. G's got him <laughs> locked in a room, probably. He told him he's in quarantine. He can only cook. He can't leave. <laughs> turn your, can you turn your phone sideways, George? Yeah. I'm, right. dri I'm, dri I'm driving back to and We go to the warehouse. To be on. All right. Where's George? Can we get John back? Trying. Okay. George, have you been protesting or what? No, because it, it, there's there's no such thing as racism. Oh, it's it, people from rich neighborhood. People, no, really, serious. Think about it. He means people, he means white privilege. He means economic privilege. That's what you're talking about. People it's true. from people rich, got economic privilege. Rich neighborhoods don't like people from poor neighborhoods. People from this town don't like this town. They don't He's like these right. people. That I mean, dress a certain way. They don't like you know, when you have your hair, you know, cut a certain way. It, you can you can keep going down down the rails. The bottom line is this: is that in in poor in the poorer neighborhoods, the uh, they they have no family and no father. So you have you have ninety percent of the young males don't have fathers. Because I do because I work I do a program with United Way called Youth Coach, and and I call my program Grave Souls. Where it's not a matter of what the person looks like; it's a matter of what their soul is. You, we help people based on on the person. Doesn't matter if they, if they're white, black, Chinese, or whatever, right? Speaking and of white privilege, John is back. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the fact of the matter is, is this: the best rise to the top. The NBA should should dispel all racism. How, the percentage of our population of black is like 17%. I think the NBA is like 72% black. Why? Because they're the best players. It's great. You want the best there. 
you want the best minds, the best players. That's awesome. So how? So what? What? What's wrong with there? Then I guess it's not indicative of what the uh, population dictates. Uh, on a different note. Um, John, I was I was talking to Chris Aceto on the radio show the other day, and we were talking. I don't know if you're aware. Chris actually, uh, we were talking about Dan Duchesne, and I wanted to get some information from you on him. Chris actually lived with him for a week there. I guess Dan had invited him. Chris was stuck out there after one of those muscle camps he did, and Dan said, you know, because Dan's from uh, Maine, like Chris. They knew each other from the gym, so he's like, can you? Can, he's like, why don't you live with me for a week? He said it was the craziest week he ever spent. <laughs> What? Oh, do you remember when Dan had the, the the house by the beach, like two blocks from the beach? Did you know that? Oh, yeah, I live. Oh. We lived in the same house. But I, not, uh, that wasn't the house, though. Chris said. To, I can't hear you. The, Chris said that excuse, wasn't the house you guys me. lived in. Excuse me. Excuse fucking me, please. Oh, my. are you in a cemetery again? I, I I listen to me. I have limited fucking time. Okay, I can't. You know, you guys. Uh, I come on the site. And you guys are just bullshitting away like three wash women. I got to get a word in the two, okay, before I get off. All right, I love all three. It's Georgie, Greg, congratulations with your cookies. John, good luck. Dave, I love you. But I got to fucking say something, all, all right? right? Go ahead. I'm not tired of this shit. Every time I come on the show, I'm like a bystander. Well, because you, you, you can't be in one place. You're like walking through a graveyard. I don't, I don't understand <laughs> it. Hey. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, listen to me. I want, I want. What is there, an eclipse want, over your I head wanna, there? Could you be quiet for a minute? I wanna, I wanna share something. Okay. All right? Tired of this shit. You look like a cow in the pasture. I want, I wanted to share my secret of my strength. My whole life, I lied to everybody. I gotta tell them what I really did for my strength. All okay? right, let's hear it. Okay. This is where I come to get my my protein. I, George, I know you got great cookies and everything, but this is where I come right here. <laughs> oh, he is in a field. I had a feeling he was in a field. He looked like he was in a pasture. I thought he was. Those are cute. What is that? You eat goats? He's no girlfriend. Oh, sheep. You eat sheep. I hope you're not doing anything these, else with those sheep. These are my buddies. So, hey, I'm not done. I'm not finished. Okay? The source of my power comes from fresh farm animals. I know it's some people, the vegetarians, and they get a little offended. <laughs> but this is where I come. I'm actually moving out here. I made a decision. Yeah. So I'm going to be living out here for now on. But you know, if I do this, continue to do the show, I'm going to be casting my show <laughs> from the farm. Okay? So I want to show you my, my, my little porky friends. So he, here we got in this bag. Let me show you right now because I'm walking. Okay? George, I love you with your cookies, but nothing beats this here, okay? You can eat all the cookies you want. Yeah. Fresh killed wow. porterhouse. Oh, you were telling okay. us about those. Isn't that the thirty dollars steak or something like that? <laughs> it's twenty five dollars. I bought three of that. <laughs> okay. So, and then there's cows over there. That's that's the cows that you know. God, you know, God forgive me, but that's the cows that get. You know, this is those cows. Okay. Yeah. I hate to admit that, but you know that's the truth. All right. So. I hear the only thing out where you are is steers and queers, and, John, and, and Jimmy, you don't got no horns on your head, so. <laughs> well, I'm, I might be going gay, too. I've been considering that lately because, uh, you know, I have, I have bad luck with women. So I might, I might, uh, I might, I might uh, turn over a new leaf. <laughs> How far out is that on, on Suffolk there? Is that pretty far out? What's up, Greg? No, I, said, Jimmy. How far, I said, how far so, out are you? How far am I? Yeah. Uh, I'm out in uh, towards Riverhead. Oh, yeah, that's pretty uh, far. Aqu Aquabog. You heard of that, right? Yeah, that's far. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm a, good, I'm a good hour of change out from Huntington. So, so where, where did John go? Ramon, whatever. You, I don't know. Respectful son. You know, I used to like you, John. You were a disrespectful <laughs> bastard. You know that? You I'd really like to are. get you John know, back, actually. You know, what, what kind of, we what, what kind of dying are you, man? What? What did I do? <laughs> I'm over here show, I'm showing my good graces. I'm showing what I did all my life to be oh. strong. I come out to the farm. I get There's fresh. John. Food. We got him back. And you and you and you and you and you take off. You go. You go somewhere in the other part of the house. I got you. I heard you the whole time. As soon as I these guys come on, John, you walk away. I don't know. I'm fucking desperate. Right, Dave? 
That, that is disrespectful. Of you, I was like watching. Let me tell you something. Practice. If you was in a sit down right now and you did that, you'd never be. You'd never come back. I tell you right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just because I wasn't on the camera doesn't mean you would didn't... never come. You went out in the hallway and left the sit down. They gave you the hallway. They put a fucking cheese water on your neck. It'd fucking be the end of you. <laughs> You'd be fucking finished. <laughs> you better thank God you're down in South Carolina in the fucking woods. You'd be Dude, safer you down here. You better stay down here. What I'm saying. Yeah. I didn't leave. I just stepped away. I was watching the whole thing. I don't have to be on the camera to see your fucking sheep. <laughs> your well, let me let me ask you. Do you eat Do you eat bacon with your oh, breakfast, John? No. I, I got you. I'm walking around, so I didn't take the camera with me. I saw the whole fucking thing. You didn't see the whole thing. I'm on a different part of the farm now. I'm with the pigs. I was over there before with the goats. Now I'm with the pigs. So you didn't. You got up and you left when I was with the fucking goats. You got up and left. Now I'm with the pigs. You tell me you see the whole thing. You're being disrespectful I, again. I heard That's two Jimmy, times you're being disrespectful. Rumor, you just lied to me. I said the whole day. I was like, no, you didn't see the whole thing. You saw the goats. Now I'm over here. With the, I'm, I'm over here with the pigs now. You didn't see. Two times you lied to me already. You, yelled at me. you were with the sheep. You were showing us the sheep, then the steak, yeah. and then you were with the pigs. I saw yeah. the whole fucking thing. No, you did see the whole thing. So what happened to the cows? Did you see the cows? Yes, that's what I said. The oh. steak. You the no, steak. you that's saw the steak. You didn't see the cow. I showed you. I showed you where the steak came from. You didn't see the fucking cow. You saw. I showed you the fucking steak, not the fucking cow. How would I know of everything? I've lost control of my shop. Greg, isn't it true you've been with a few pigs in your day? Twenty-five dollars for you. Those are the cows over there. Now you with the fucking pigs. I saw the whole thing. Saw the whole thing. Is Greg still in it? Oh. Oh, God. Greg, isn't Greg, it true you've been with a few pigs during your day? Huh? Oh, he muted himself. What do you say? I was asking Greg if he's been with a few pigs himself over the years. Oh, uh, I've been with a lot of pigs. <laughs> I, and I got the pig that keeps on giving. The fuck, I had her since I was like fucking 18, man. Oh, he's flexing. Here, here John. Here, John. Go ahead. Here, John. It's good. Jimmy, how's, that, how's that for fucking 61, huh? How's are you that? back in the oh, sauce, Jimmy? What's that fucking on? How's that fucking stuff going? Look, hey. Look, now look, hey. Hey. And I drink a fucking case of beer on a weekend, too. Are you hey. are you taking anadrols again? Excuse me? Are you taking anadrols again? I can't no? tell you that. I can't tell you that on the air. It fucking sounds like. You don't have to say nothing. <laughs> John, you know me fucking 30. You know you guys know me 30 fucking years. All right? Do I sound like I'm on fucking juice right now? Yes. Yeah, you do, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. He, might be on, on, he might be on like 400 milligrams of Anadrol a day now. Yeah, John. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you my bottles of testosterone right now. Here we go. Look. I think, it, I one, think it's probably one about bottle. Two bottles oh, so and good. three bottles. <laughs> and, okay, and you're doing four anadrols a day on top of that. Because I know <laughs> well, you, you must be. Look at that. Look at look at that. What are you kidding me? Fuck. Wow, that look like I'm doing steroids. Come on. Yeah. 61. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, he, John? You know what Jimmy looks like? He looks like he's ready to, to go in one of those um, the Stallone films. You know, with the uh, with the Expendables. He looks like he's ready yeah. to join the cast, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. He, he, if you just strapped a couple of guns on him right now, yeah. like, like, this, like he he'd be ready to like like a warrior is yeah. what he looks yeah. like. With, with the oh, earphone oh. and the black shirt, he looks exactly like that. Get Carl like Weathers. The black, I'm like a, I'm like the, the AR-15. I'm like the Black Ops, right? Right, John, back in the, in the war. Yeah, you need yeah. A, you need some weapons. Imagine this, John. <laughs> Carl <laughs> Weathers. Face face. John, Carl Make Weathers. Sure. Dolph Lundgren and Jimmy the Bull, right there. What a crew! Look at him. Looks good. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> See the absolute shirt. Ah, oh, you can, right? Yeah, you can. Look. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I'd love to oh, know. Yeah, it's the, he's probably got that foam propped up on a, on, a, on a pile of fucking cow shit too. <laughs> what is right? that? Look at that view we got. Yeah, look at that. It's like hey, Jimmy, you gonna eat those steaks raw? 
Sneak him out. You know, I tell you the truth. What I do, Greg, is I throw him on a grill and I just, you know, kind of like get him a little brownish. Uh, and that, and that's about it. I just, I just down him with a couple of beers. Oh, that sounds great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll season him. Yeah. I know, I know, John. Like, I know Greg, John Greg likes him raw that, too. That, that, Look, look at the ribs off right through there. Look at it. That's a muscle right there, Joe. Look at Greg, that. Greg right likes there. a bloody that, steak also, that's, a, Jimmy. that's an abdominal right there. I got a fucking <laughs> golf ball right there. You and Stallone. Ridiculous. <laughs> hey, Greg, in, in your estimation, is Jimmy, is Jimmy doing a cycle right now? Is Jimmy doing a cycle? Why, why, yeah. why, you keep, why, why you keep asking me? I'm asking Greg. What's his opinion? His expert opinion. No, I, I think, uh, I don't know. I think you might, I think maybe a little test. No? <laughs> <laughs> no? He's doing at least four anadrols a day. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, at least. Least. Too cocky, right, John? He's too cocky. What's that? He's too cocky. He's in juice mode, right? I know him. I know him. I know him. You're fucking Jack. You are fucking Jack. Right? Oh, you know what? He turned, he turned 60. He turned 60, he and now he wants to feel his youth again, John. So he went back on the on, on the Anadrol. But his girlfriend was stealing them all from him. <laughs> right, Jimmy? All I see is clouds. I know Jimmy's mentality. He's like, I'm 60, I'm fucking, I don't care anymore. I'll just take some uh, Anadrols again, you know? Feel Atta good. Boy, Jimmy. Jimmy, you look good. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Luckily, listen, great. you know what? Uh, at, at, at 60 years old, you just like say, fuck it, man. You know, <laughs> let it go. Let it happen, man. I you just know? said that. Let, 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 it, let, it, let, it, let it be, you know? What do, what, let it, what do I got, like 10, 10 fucking good years left? Fucking tank Let it be, brother. Let it happen. Yeah. Breathe the air in. Hit the weights. Train like a fucking animal. You know, you never know when it's going to end. Look at the riots. Look at all the bullshit going on in this fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. Jimmy, you should wrestle one of those pigs. You should put it in a fucking chokehold. Get a lot of hit. You'll give us a lot of hits if you do that. <laughs> you should go over there. I know, I, know, I, I, know, I know John's looking at that arm right there. Look at that, look at that fuck. There's a lot of power in that. There's Jimmy, a let lot me of ask you a question. Arm, John. Yeah, there is. There's let a me... lot of fucking power in that fucking arm right there. Let me right? ask you a question, I've seen, Jimmy. I've seen that arm. I've Quiet seen down that for arm a second. A 200 pound dumbbell. <laughs> Quiet down for a second, Jimmy. Let me ask you a question. When you watch these riots on TV, Jimmy, oh, do you think in your head, give me a fucking axe? I want to go after these fucking guys. <laughs> I tell you the truth, you know, when I watch these riots, I got mixed feelings. Thank you know, you. I really do. I, you know, I got, I, I'm mixed up. I'm like, I, I look at them, I go, look at these poor retards. You know, what, what are they, do they even know what they're doing? You know, they're destroying their own fucking towns and countries. And, you know, it's not about the, the guy who got killed. Everybody, get, cops kill everybody. That, you know, that happens sometimes, you know. What are you going to do? It doesn't, there's no color involved. Sometimes oh, shit happens. You know what I mean? I mean, you know. Well my, well, my cousins grew up in the projects. People I don't want to know your opinion on the there. riots. I want to know, if when you see that, do you feel violence? Do you want to go out there with an axe and, like, go after these guys? I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I really can't look upon violence because when I see violence, I tend to start getting violent. I know you do. That's up. why I'm asking you. So, yeah. So I can't. I really can't be around it. I can't see it. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to hear about it because I start to get, I, I get a little amped up myself, and I got I to gotta stay away from that shit. It's bad. And, 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 that, and that's a good thing because Pelletia is fucking dangerous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I am. I, I am. And I, I, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to look at it, man. It really just, it, it really upsets me. I'll be honest with you. So I don't like, I don't even know where they're going with it, what's going to become of it, you know, how, how it even started. I, I, got any, I don't want to even know. I can't be involved. I, I, I just want to turn a blind eye to that shit. Well, they want to That's what I wanted. Cops. You go out they to the fields no and cops. you meditate in the. Yeah, in the, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Let's 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 uh, shut down the precincts, get rid of the cops, and I tell you what. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, really? Good luck. Good luck. Oh yeah. You, you need. You know. Unfortunately, we live in a world. You know. That if there was no law, this 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 would be like back in the gladiator fucking days. <laughs> because, you know, we, we might be in, you know we might have technology and cell phones and you to go to the fucking beauty parlor and all that bullshit. But I tell you, down deep, everybody's a fucking reckless maniac. It's in our blood. <laughs> You're right. It may get to that though. We may fucking be all savages. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, look. We, I mean, the only thing that keeps everybody in check is the law, right? Right. 
How do you so, get to the cops, though? Who are you going to call? George? <laughs> they said they, they wanted to call a social worker, some 80 year old woman going to come over with a fucking walker. <laughs> you know? Call 1 800 Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Call Jimmy's Jimmy, come here with a bat. They're going to find Jimmy. Jimmy's going to be living on the farm. I'm getting farther and farther away from fucking uh, social you know, people and, and crowds. I want to be in the wilderness, man. I'm done with you, you, know you, know you know what the sad part is? The sad part of the whole thing is that the one, the one uh, aspect of society that really brings everyone together is sports, right? We all love watching sports. It's it's not racist. It's it's it. There's no denominations. It's pure. It's a pure activity, and they've taken away our sports. Give us back the sports. Sports will reunite this country way more than just watching riots on TV. Will you can't quarantine listen, everyone forever? Listen, Dave. I'm got to bring the sports back. I I gotta say, I'm that includes really, bodybuilding. I am really confused in these times. I am totally confused. I don't know. What people want anymore? It's like outrageous. I, I, you know, so I'm very, I'm very confused. That's the first time in my life that I've seen, like, almost see the world for what it really is. But you know, what I'm saying? Small minority. I want you to be confused. It's only a small minority that's marching. It's not tens of millions of people marching. It's a small minority that's organized. It's out there. That's not indicative of what the world. The world is what you see when you drive your truck, and right. the people you get on a daily basis. Look right. around all those people. They're good. That's true. I have they to like agree, George. Jimmy. If you watch they the like media, Jimmy. you think the fucking world's coming to win. If you watch CNN, you think the no, fucking world is over. We are confused. That's yeah. the reason. That's their the reason for negative you. The reason for why there's negative news is because people will watch the negative news, and it sells. That's why they're doing it. If they, if they listen, I, I, I really don't un- listen. I know that there was a, I was a tragic death, and that really that cop really shouldn't have did what he did. I was fucked up. It was on video, yeah. 100%. and I, I don't I don't care what color they were. They could have been 100%. two aliens. I mean, that was really fucked up to do that to another human being, especially when a guy was saying, you know, please get off me, and what. And they got the cop clearly heard and say, I can't breathe. Please get off me. And that whole thing was fucked up. You know what I mean? But in, in my daily life, I have all kinds of friends, you know, and I get along with everybody, with different races, police officers, I have some of my best friends. Because cops. you're not a racist, I, Jimmy. That's I don't, why. I don't have a problem with anybody. I, I, you're I mean, not a racist. You know, that's people. why. It, I don't I don't fucking understand it. I mean, I really don't understand it. So I think it's, it, it really it confuses me. You know why, John? You know why you're confused, Jimmy? Because you were not you were not brought up racist by your parents. <laughs> You were brought up to, to, to believe that everyone's an equal. And unfortunately, a lot of families are not raised that way. They, they're very racist parents that pass on <clears throat> racist mentalities to their kids who then pass that on. And then they act out in society on that. And then it, it acts as a reflection on the white race or the Spanish race or the, or the Hindu race or the, you know, uh, I mean, or the I, Indian race. You know, so yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. is it, it, they're racial biases that are built into cultures. You know that. You love to point out the stereotypes of cultures, but there's also racist stereotypes in there as well. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and that, it's a shame because they cast an aspersion on all the people who don't feel that way. I wasn't raised racist, you know. Um, so you know, listen, I, I don't I, understand I it around. either, but I, around, but Dave. You know, I understand I how people it. are brainwashed by their parents. It's white people who are fucked up. It is. It's white people. When you start seeing these people with the, I'm sorry, you're white. I'm sorry. And they're washing their fucking feet and shit like that. Did you see that, John? Where they're washing the fucking, the cops, there's cops. Look at the New York City cop. He's a fucking disgrace. That guy Monaghan, getting on his fucking knees with the people who are trying to kill him, holding the rioters' hands. You, you see, some of the some people may look at that and go, oh, look, isn't that nice? That's a, that's a nice gesture. He's showing solidarity. No, he's not. He's showing them. He's empowering them. I would never get on my knees like that. White people are fucked up. We're all kids. I'm wearing shirts. I'm white privilege. God, forgive me. Forgive me. You know me. what, Greg? Greg, you know it's what? White Greg, guilt. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you my true feelings. Okay, my true feelings. I just that wish everybody would just get along. We have one earth, yes. one one human race. I wish that everybody would just get along and help each other. This would be a wonderful world. You imagine if everybody just. They helped each other and loved each other and, and well, just, you know, Jimmy, I mean, Mike like, you know, no starvation, nobody starves. I mean, like, it would be a wonderful place to live, but it ain't. It's not. My ex-wife you know? is half black. My kid's grandfather was black uh, 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 on my wife's side, right? My ex-wife. I was married to her for 16 years. Her, her father was black. She's mulatto, my ex-wife. 
and her father was the grandson of a slave. You know what I mean? For on a plantation in Georgia. So what do you, if I hate blacks or I hate black people, you know, that I hate my fucking kids. You know what I mean? My kids, my kids are, are, are quarter black. It's not like they like got a little bit of, they got a lot of, you know, a lot of that shit in them. I'm well, I don't believe it. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in any of it. I don't. I don't condone it. If somebody's Jimmy, a racist, I think to me they're, they're they're fucking ignorant. If what you're you a were racist, saying before it was either you or George who was saying. I, I agree with you. Let me tell you something. I have friends that are black, right? But I never call them. Oh, I'm gonna hang out with my black friends. It's, it's my friend. I don't even. I don't even notice his. You know his skin color. I don't believe in any of that shit. It's the. It's the fucking. That Black Lives Matter is a cult. There's a difference between. People saying black lives, I, I, every life matters. Like, but it's not just black, all lives matter. He's like a bull. Put a ring in his nose. Give me a ring in his nose. He's like a bull. He is the bull. Give me the bull. Look at him. Give me the bull. He's the bull. After us has become a very deep, uh, deep show all of a sudden. Four and deep a insights we have. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Man, you you guys. Guys. I gotta say, I gotta say, most of the time I'm fucking miserable. When I come on the show, man, I never laugh so fucking hard in my life. I gotta, you, guys are, you, you guys, are, you guys, are, Dave, you said it right the other day, man. This is this show is therapy for me because I laugh, I forget about my problems. You know what I mean? That's why I love coming on the show, man. It's just it's a relief for me. You know, it really is a mental relief. You know what I'm saying? John, do you like how Jimmy still has been has been promising he's gonna come visit us for like uh, the last eight months? And he doesn't. I mean, I wish he'd come here. I really do. He would freaking love it. I'll be there in three weeks. He keeps telling me. I'll be there in three weeks. Three weeks. No masks. The restaurants are open. Now the sun. The the sun came out in New York. He doesn't want to leave anymore. I I need a gym, John. I haven't been going. I need to go to the gym. Jimmy, if you move down here, you could have your own cattle. Okay, in your backyard, and you can slaughter the cows yourself and eat them. What's better than that? You got a gym over there, Dave? You think at gyms in Florida? Yeah, they do, Jimmy. A few of them, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and they're right, open, too. Down. And they're open. That's even better. Yeah, Then, yeah, I, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come down. I'm going to come down at the uh, beginning of July. I'm coming down. <laughs> you are, You're so bullshit. My <laughs> dream. Here's my dream Look scenario. Look at that waste. Look at that waste. What, what happened to that waste? Why? Where is it? Here's my dream scenario. In 10 years, I want everyone to be living in Florida within a half hour drive of each other. And, yeah. uh, and it'll be like a retirement home show we'll do, you know? <laughs> I'm coming down. I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to come down. Greg will be down here. Jimmy will be down here. We'll get John down here. Mr. Dude, G will be, be making there, cookies down here. He'll be 75 years old. It'll be great. I would move out of here if I didn't have family here right now. I'd get the fuck. Look at this. Look at you. I'll, I'll build you a, a guest house, uh, Greg, so you can move to. <laughs> this is what I think it is, John. Oh, John's gone. Look at his empty seat again. Mod on that is fucking guy. Oh, you actually have a mask, Jimmy? Right here. Unbelievable. I've never, never, never seen anything like Jimmy. it in my life. Jimmy, just because I'm not yeah, in front of the that's camera what I, that's, doesn't this mean is what I, I think can't see my this is what I think is what I think of the fucking mask. Look, yeah. if, I, if, I had to, if I had to be, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think of hey, what, Jimmy, why don't you go wrestle a pig or something like that so we can at least see something entertaining? <laughs> I I asked the guy if they didn't want to hurt the pig because they got a slaughter. No, go pick one up. Can you pick one of those things up? They're pretty heavy, aren't they? Yeah. You should start lifting like pigs up or something like that. Those things are fucking wild, Dave. They don't fuck around these pigs. They're like a thousand pounds, aren't they? Remember? Yeah, the fucking things are like fucking 500 pounds, man. You can lift one of those up. You can do anything. My mother things, you know, caught a chicken you know, in our warehouse you know, that those time, right? They, 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 they're like a, a, a 1% club. They get a fucking one. They all come after you. <laughs> those, those, those hey, what, happened to that, what happened to that film of Branch Warren's stabbing the wild hog? <laughs> <laughs> we, we got oh, it. I never saw that. Yeah. I, I went hunting with him. Remember when Mr. G was chasing the chicken in the warehouse? I do remember that. Did you ever catch that chicken, George? I don't remember. It was too fast for you, I think, right? By the leg. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimmy. I love Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> you're brilliant. 
Jimmy, you gotta get rings. You gotta get one of those rings in his nose now. Look, I'm, I'm taking it up the ass right now. Look, hey, look, here you go. <laughs> Buy one of those. Oh my god. Would you watch Brokeback Mountain last night? Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, I saw that movie. I got to tell you, I was very disturbed. I don't know what happened after that movie. I, I like that one guy. What's his name? Glennon Hall, whatever? Heath Ledger? Who, who's Jalen Hall. Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, Jelly, Jelly, Jelly Donut? What was his name? <laughs> That's close. Uh, Jake close Gyllenhaal enough, and, uh, and then Heath enough. Ledger, who's no longer alive. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heath I don't Ledger know. They died. must have got paid a lot of money, whatever. Look, I got nothing against gay people either. Don't, 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 I'm only fucking around. I, you know, don't take me serious, you know? Now, Jimmy, the last, the last time you were on a cycle, I you were uh, weren't you fooling around with some girl on a horse or something like that? Uh, yes. What happened was uh, I have I have to get out to tell the story. So what happened? What happened was I, I, you know, yeah, you know the story, Dave. What tell happened, the story. You know, I, I, people haven't heard it for years. Can you get through here? Oh, wait, this guy got to get through with the truck. Thank, thank you, fellas. Yeah, just on the phone on bullshit. You know, I got lost in my own shit. Yeah, thank you. All right, man. You guys are going to store any more cows lately or what? <laughs> Hopefully not. Oh, he's getting a random truck. I thought she trucks? said that they were going to have a small truck. He doesn't even own that uh, truck, Jimmy. One or two. I don't know. I mean, well, he did already, baby. I don't know. He's sitting in other people's uh, trucks. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the idea of that, too, but the steak is, you know, when you... I, I know. It's, it's like, he, it's Jimmy, we're doing a show like, here. Can you uh, I'm, I'm, carry I'm on your conversation elsewhere? I'm actually like elsewhere? questioning myself. After I, you know, now now who's know? disrespectful? Poor fucking yeah. animal, you know? guy's on a fucking radio show. He can All right, fellas, take care. He's trying to charm <laughs> them after he sat in their truck <laughs> with that answer. Listen, I'm not, that's the fucking owner's son of the farm. I got to be respectful. I'm not like you, John. I'm respectful, all right? That was the owner's son, and I had to fucking make peace with him, all right? You were sitting in his truck. <laughs> So I, I, I'm going to show you what they do. I'm going to show you what they do to the pigs, the ones they don't want. Yeah, look. How was that? that? That's a what gigantic fire. That? Oh, they burn the fire. pigs? <laughs> yeah, the, the ones that are like lame that they can't walk, whatever, they throw them in the fire, you know. <laughs> you should go get some bacon, some free bacon out of that, Jimmy. So anyway, John... Unlike you, that was the oldest son of the fucking farm, right? So I had to make amends with him. When he came through here, I had to make like, you know, I like the guy and I'm making peace with him because you don't do that, all right? <laughs> so back to, back to your story before I got out of here with the girl with the horse farm over there. I used yeah. to go there late at night because when I was benching fucking, you know, all that weight, my, I had a lot of pain going on, okay? So this chick, I met her in the gym one day. She says, I work on a horse farm. I make this... Butte with this, uh, I don't know what she mixed with the butte. The butte's a horse uh, aspirin, like this. Yeah. And she used to mix it with, uh, I forget what she did. DMSO. Thank you, John. So she made this concoction, and you're supposed to rub it on the joint, you know what I mean? And it's and it sucks into the, goes through the skin and into the joint, right? But the yeah, deal was the that I, when I when I used to get there, because she got, the girl was into me, I had to bang her in the store for the horses. <laughs> That was her. That was the only way I could get the fucking mixture. So I said, "All right, no problem." And I had to go there after eleven at night. I don't know why. So I used to go to the farm, 11, 13, 11 12 midnight. I used to go in the horse stall, bend her over in the horse stall. You know, and all the horses were going nuts because I guess they heard the sound, so they were getting fucking. So they were they were kicking, they were the, fucking, kicking the fucking kicking the fucking stalls going bananas. I'm over there banging the, the girl in the fucking stall. You know, and then when I was all done, you know, she gave me the butte thing, and I said, thank you, I'll see you next week. <laughs> so why did you have to get out of the truck to tell that story? <laughs> well, I had to go through the motions. I can't do that in a seat. You know what I mean? I gotta, you no, know, but the, right, if I don't cut these guys off, we'll never end the show. John, I love you. Greg, I love you. Uh, Mr. G, thanks for the cookies. Man. Jimmy the Bull, thanks for the entertainment today. I love you, I'm Dave Palumbo for another installment love you too, of man. After John, Hours. I love you too, kids, John. <laughs> yeah, baby, I'm Rex, bitch! Making the world better! Georgie! Georgie! Woo! <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Yeah!